Climate change is presenting a host of challenges for farming in the U.S. The EPA says while a longer growing season helps some crops in some areas, tough weather makes it tougher to farm certain crops. And while traditional farming is innovating, there is one solution in Faribault that grows 24-7 no matter the weather. It's just one food security solution in the face of climate change. No matter the weather out here, here we are. Step inside Living Greens Farm in Fairbo. We always wash your water bath. And it's just right. This is row room three. For growing green. It is the spa for salads. It's about 80 degrees in here year round. These A-frames filled with plenty of lettuce, but no pesticides, herbicides, or even soil. The power of aeroponic farming. So when we're talking aeroponics, we're thinking astronauts growing potatoes in space kind yes, of stuff. Kind of stuff, yes, <laughs> yes. And if, if we were to take away Away the soil and the sun it wouldn't have that in the wind how do we grow this in a space that doesn't have that and here in Faribault we're able to do that the hue here is important to simulate the sun and push photosynthesis we mimic daylight and even night they mimic the wind, the rain, and they do it efficiently. You're using minimal water in here. Yes, we're using 98% less water than traditional farming. The result? This is what our romaine looks like. But how does it grow? This is where you start. This is where the babies start. This tray right here is over 2,000 plants. Head grower Michelle Keller shows us the spongy volcanic rock that holds 300 times its weight in water. We put the seeds in here and then the beautiful component about this is that the rock will is an inorganic rock that holds water. So the plant can't drown and it can't dry out, but the root structures can start. This operation is truly vertical and not just because they grow up. We're taking, washing them, we're chopping them, and then we're making salad bags right next door, like 20 feet away. So in, in the sense of manufacturing, we are fully vertical. It also takes a shorter trip to its final destination. I can harvest something here and have it be in the store the very next day. This type of technology solves multiple problems. It cuts transit emissions by delivering regionally. Currently, most of the nation's lettuce is typically trucked in from California, taking days and hundreds of miles that contribute to climate change. Those are all factors that go into why this makes so much sense and why this is being so successful in the industry. A NASA developed technology now taking off here on this planet. It's not futuristic anymore. This is today, this is now, this is what we need to do, this is what we need to start solving for. And you can find them in local stores like Kowalski's, Jerry's, uh, uh, Hy-Vee, and Whole Foods. And there's an online farmer's market that delivers fresh oh. local produce to the Seven County Metro so they can bring Living Greens Farm products right to your door. It is called Market Wagon, which I had never heard of. It's kind of like mm. an online farmer's yeah. market, which is uh, really cool. I didn't see Matt Damon in that story. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Well, this is the future. This yeah. is real <laughs> what's happening right now. And unfortunately, what's really happening right now, Mike, you can speak this too, is how, how is climate change actually impacting farmers? I mean, we do talk about the weather all the time, weather impacts or, you know, there's a storm that impacts a crop, it pushes up prices for us at the grocery store. And I feel like we've covered that extensively. And so when you look at a technology like this, it makes more and more sense of like, you're building up your own resiliency. Yeah. Um, and we know that, that crops are really sensitive and to it's high density changes. growing too, so <laughs> it's just more efficient. And mm -hmm. so not only maybe are you not seeing those market fluctuations, it's it's more price stable to begin with just by nature of what's going on there. Yeah, and as our population grows and lives in more urban centers, yeah. that speaks to you know using your, your land wisely because yeah. uh, we run out of space and resources at some point. Yeah. Well, it's a cool story. Thanks for bringing it. And thanks for being brave and putting on a hairnet on television. <laughs> You're welcome. You look great. You're welcome. You know what they're trying to innovate for now is that spongy volcanic stuff that mm -hmm. you saw is like imported from another country, actually. I think somewhere in the Netherlands or so, something like that. So that, that's got a climate footprint as well, right? Yes. And so they're trying to figure out like a compostable, locally made version of Makes that cool. to continue to make this well-rounded. Let yeah. them go.